Hey, Chad here from uh, Flying S Models. Thought I'd give you guys a little demo on one of the foundational techniques I use for uh, painting cockpits and other uh, uh, parts. Um, so as you see here, here's a finished product. It's a 1 32nd scale cockpit. You can see in some of the uh, recesses, darker areas, some of the high spots have lighter areas. So I'm gonna show you how, to, how it's done. Let's get rolling. First step, I'm gonna start with a 148 scale uh, resin seat. You can see plenty of detail in there, right? I'm gonna show you how to pick up that detail, show some of the highlights. Uh, start off by doing a technique that guys use uh, called black basing. Most people use that for the outside. I use it, uh, that plus a combination of washes and paints for uh, cockpit areas. All right, so the first thing I do, this is a, a quick and easy technique. I drill a 1 16th hole in the bottom of the part. You can see here, insert a uh, cutoff toothpick in there that makes holding it a little bit easier right and easier to cut off port block later uh, i start by taking uh, i spray primarily tamiya acrylics uh, and i start off by painting the whole thing black i'll do that now you don't have to be very exact with this step uh, you could just spray it all over no need to be careful just don't glob it up anywhere if you're interested, I spray it about 20 PSI. I thin my paints about 50-50 thinner to, uh, to paint. And I try, uh, for the most part, to get down into some of these really tight recesses in here to put some black in the shadow areas of the seat. All right. And that's probably good enough. Right here, you can see, basically pure black seat, nothing special. Okay, for this next step, what I do is I mix up uh, whatever the primary cockpit color is. In this case, this is a uh, seat going into a, a F4U Corsair, so uh, I like to use uh, interior green. Um, I like to tint it a little bit um, and make my own color, so I do about half and half uh, flat green with zinc chromate yellow. Um, to give me the color that I like so and I just do like I did with the black I just paint the color I focus more of the spray on the flat areas or the raised area and try not to get that much into the recessed areas so just being kind of light about it sort of just misting it around and, and in certain areas like the sides here where I want it to be a little bit more green I'll let the airbrush just Stay on that spot for a while and it'll make it a little lighter same thing here you see just holding on that spot and then again on the back back is less important because that'll be up against the uh, bulkhead and won't be seen okay all right so that's probably good enough for this stage. let me get the seat pan there that's probably good enough for this stage so you can see here uh, some of the more recessed areas like down here inside the seat are a little bit darker up against the side of the seat belts there those are also a little darker and up against in the creases of the side of the seat with the back uh, also a little darker now to highlight um, this a little bit more what I like to do is I like to thin the paint a little bit more and then I add a little bit more of the zinc chromate to lighten the primary color and then spray it just on the high spots and I'll do that now so now, like I said, I've got the primary color lightened a little bit more with a little uh, yellow zinc chromate. And then I'll just come in here to just, I got it, uh, the nozzle turned down and I just put a little bit in only the flat spots. Again, really avoiding the, uh, the areas where I want shadows to be and just kind of hitting it like so. I'm not going to be extremely careful at this stage because I'm gonna do a wash after this, an oil wash, and then I'm gonna follow that up with some highlighting uh, painting to really bring things out. Sometimes people think this is a little bit overdone when I get done with it, but given the scale and the fact that you're gonna be viewing the cockpit from you know usually one to two feet away, is you really wanna have some pop on the components or the seats in order to bring stuff out, the details out. Okay. Now, the next step is we're gonna put a little bit of an oil wash. A lot of people use this um, 
this step and then they stop. Uh, I, this is kind of the, one of the middle steps for me. Uh, one of the techniques I use, to, I create my own washes usually, is I drink a ton of soda. So I just use, uh, save all the bottle caps, plastic bottle caps, and I use those for paint mixers. So what I like to do is take uh, just a tiny bit of uh, Winsor & Newton black, and I high oil paint, and I high put that with a little bit of uh, raw umber. Mix it up. I don't like it to be too black. I like it to be kind of a brownish, muddy color. And then what I do is I mix in usually about seven or so drops. We'll do eight or so here of uh, mineral spirits. Kind of mix it up. I just do it kind of by feel, but mix it up to a consistency. You don't want it to be too heavy um, that it just sits there and doesn't run into the creases. You don't want it to be too light that it doesn't actually put color anywhere that you want it. So this looks pretty good. I'll show you here. A good way to test it is by dropping a little on a napkin and watching how it runs. You can see here how it's running pretty good and leaving a good bit of color. So then what you do is you just take it. This is another step. You don't have to be neat at all. You just drop it in around the crease areas and you can just watch it flow into the recesses like so and anywhere that you don't want it you just come back in with a clean brush and sort of wipe it off those areas all right and that's how it's done see here it's kind of step three is the wash step okay now on uh, this step um, what I'm gonna do the wash has dried uh, typically if you don't uh, take any proactive measures to dry it uh, I used a hair dryer in this case to get it dried pretty uh, quickly in a matter of minutes um, you might want to wait an hour or two or if you spray it real close in with your airbrush uh, you'll cause the uh, wash to run uh, and it'll look nasty uh, so I've now made another mixture of my base color thinned really heavily with uh, to me a thinner and then I added more uh, yellow zinc chromate than the last time to get a real light uh, spray so then I come in here and do the same thing I did before just focusing on the high areas would be of the seat back and I put just some real light you can see here colors in here trying to really avoid the recesses this time and just lighten those high areas. Okay, that's good enough. We'll take care of the rest um, with brush painting now. This is the last of the airbrush steps that I use. Now for the next step we're going to start some detail painting, some highlight painting I call it, um, really touching the high spots. Uh, for this um, we'll be brush painting and, uh, and I don't like to dry brush. Dry brush is kind of non-selected, it just slaps paint. A lot of people do that, it just slaps paint over there everywhere. I like to just uh, be very selective and hand paint uh, with a small brush. Uh, for these I, I like to use Vallejo paint. Um, they're water-based acrylics. Uh, they uh, do not dry out real quick like the Tamiya paint do. Um, on this uh, interior green, I like to make a really light inversion of that using um, equal parts of uh, yellow matte and uh, golden olive with a drop or two of uh, white. So I take a little bit of this uh, mixture that I just made up, just a little amount, and then I run it right along the high spot areas, like the rim of the seat pan, just like so the high spots of the seat rails, like so. Maybe just the top part of the top seat rail, like so. See, a lot of people, they would use like a white paint and dry brush it, and all it would look like is dry brush white paint on the high spots. In this case, it's a version of the base color that really makes it stand out when you look at the cockpit, the finished cockpit. So that's the technique right there. And you can kind of do the same thing with the seat belts. 
I would take a, a tan or a gray, light gray, and I would just come in here and paint the belts in that way. If I really wanted to get crazy, which maybe I show in a later session, I could come back with this thin brush, a highly thin black or really dark gray, and I could run it right along the edge between the seat belt and the seat back and really put a nice shadow in there to add depth.